Hello there, nerds, and welcome to Go to Their 30 Rock Podcast, a weekly chronological <laughs> journey through 30 Rock. Like, you get the jokes, the references, the highs, the lows, and all of the blurgs that come with one of the best shows of the 21st century. As always, I'm your host, Curtis Stone, and joining me is... David Amick. And welcome to episode 123, season 6, episode 20, entitled Queen of Jordan 2, Mystery of the Phantom Pooper, originally airing May 3rd, 2012. David, if you would, please give us a quick summary slash synopsis of this episode. <clears throat> this week on Queen of Jordan, Angie's getting ready to launch her new fashion line, Chic, but her plans go awry after Jack, an executive of NBC, a television network, has to ditch their meeting after he learns that his wife Avery is being returned from North Korea. Meanwhile, Randy's trying to find a date for the big night. In order to get ready, she asks Liz, the showrunner of a show at NBC, <laughs> the television network, to babysit Virginia, Tracy and Angie's child, where Liz and Virginia get into a big fight, and there's lots of rudeness. Rude. Meanwhile, Dufuan's around, Portia gets a line, and some lady named Jenna desperately tries to get cast on the show. Yeah, that was uh, a little bit harder than to do for the last one, which kind of gets into my biggest thing with this episode where with the last episode it definitely functioned as a standalone quote unquote mm-hmm. Queen of Jordan episode where all the Queen of Jordan characters had their own storyline whereas this one like apart from Angie like Jack was really the main character of the episode and Liz to a lesser degree yeah. which I mean yes it's 30 Rock and it's a 30 Rock episode but like the, I feel like the last one did a better job of inserting the 30 Rock characters into Queen of Jordan without them having taken over like dominant storylines in a way that wouldn't actually work for that separate TV yeah, show. Yeah, it does feel like more 30 Rock episode with Queen of Jordan characters versus a Queen yeah. of Jordan show with but they still characters. Sorry, but yeah, but they still frame it as a Queen of Jordan episode. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I do think of the two Queen of Jordan episodes, this one's a little bit weaker, but there's, there's a tongue that I pull from this as like jokes or whatever, so uh, it definitely has its place. Um sort of in like my my favorite 30 rock episodes um but yeah it just feels like uh i don't know it just feels like i don't want to say gimmicky but i feel like they went to the well too soon again after the last time and they didn't do it and it, it doesn't feel as polished as the the previous queen of jordan but there's still a lot in here that's really great um but yeah, it just eh, kind of stumbles to get there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure, there were definitely a lot of funny moments, but I kind of feel like the impetus for this was, oh, the last one was like so fun and worked out really well, like let's do it again, as opposed to, I don't know, here's an organic, like here's a great idea for a, for a second episode to do the same thing. And I mean, to me, that's what clearly showed in how it's put together. It, it definitely felt like a straight up 30 Rock episode as opposed to framing it. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it almost came off as... Queen of Jordan was in like its 10th season kind of thing and it's just like stretching for plots and stories and so they're like fine just fuck it make it about 30 Rock characters kind of thing Yeah, which isn't a bad thing and again like I feel like we're kind of poo-pooing the episode but it's still like a lot of great bits and moments in here but compared to the previous Queen of Jordan it's just not it's not as uh, clean. It's not as well put together. Yeah. That said, there are still, like, the Real Housewives references with <laughs> yeah. all the drink throwing and yeah. table uh, table and couch yeah. and chair toppling. And yeah. I assume the fashion show has got to be some sort of reference. Oh, if I'm not sure. an exact reference and some allusion to someone's, yeah. like, project they had in some episode. Uh, I don't doubt on. there's been multiple yeah. uh, fashion show fashion lines started by a number of those... Real housewife people, but yeah, I don't have any specifics just because thank God I'm not involved in that. Because could you? There's so many of them. Like I was just thinking, well, we can get into it, but maybe not too long. But like I was just thinking, like so in the last seven months, we've watched all of that's available of RuPaul Drag Race. That's not a completely different country outside of UK and Australia. So that's 13 seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, six, five seasons of All Stars, two seasons of the UK, and so that's what's that? And Canada. And so that's 20 seasons of shows? That, 21, yeah. 21 seasons of shows of just reality drag. I couldn't imagine trying to watch all of the Housewives stuff because there's so many of them. There's, then there's the spinoffs, and it's just like 
at least with drag race like we've talked about it, it's talent it's competition there's something to watch and even if you don't give a shit about the drama there's still an aspect to it that's entertaining whereas all that real housewife stuff it's just p- petty and narcissism and egos just clashing that's all it, and it's i couldn't i couldn't imagine watching that for yeah. a season much less for 20 plus seasons of that yeah. but well drag race is a competition which makes it different there is yeah. still like a clear i mean yeah I, i'll say still, there's plot li- i guess i don't know real housewives i feel like is more like a quote-unquote real life soap opera right so it's not really going after the same mission i mean no it's not i mean it's a different side of reality but at least with like a survivor or a, a big brother like the plot lines you can kind of see them coming and you can kind of see where the producers and the directors are skewing it to tell a story but there's also a competition involved. You know, at the end of the day, these people will end up leaving and there'll only be one left kind of thing. But with the Real Housewives, they're not getting voted off, so they're going to stay there. Right. And they're always going to be... Well, in a way, they do away. get voted off if they're not uh, popular enough oh, for the audiences. Yeah, they, get, they get written out. Oh. Or yeah, I think there's a thing where it's like, a lot of times, bef- <laughs> before someone's introduces like a new cast member, like they'll be brought on as like a friend or oh, so, like God. like a featured player, basically. And like... They'll use that as like a test run to decide who should be actually added as a main cast member and who gets uh, either stays, I guess, in that friend of status or just disappears off the show. So Good in boy. a way, they get voted off, but not not a in a not, different not exactly the same yeah. way. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely two different concepts. Like, yeah. uh, it's. I mean, if you're someone who definitely just wants like ridiculous people being dramatic and soapy, like. Sure. Then you would be into it, which is not something that we are into. Yeah, as I guess much. like thinking about it that way, that is like, I guess our generation of soap operas, kind of ideal. It is just oh for sure people being like super rich and yeah. over the top and outrageous scenarios that really don't apply to my real life, but it's still entertaining. Yeah, and that's all that a soap opera is. It's just pre staged. Yeah. Which I agree yeah. that those types of shows definitely like soap operas for the modern generation but it's not even necessarily rich because like Bra- I mean Bravo has all the shows like but Below Deck and mm-hmm. that aren't necessarily about rich people like but it's like the same thing but you have like dramatic people working on a boat or dramatic people do- working on the summer island whatever yeah I mean I, I there's so many out there I don't even know them all but oh right and those are the Bravo vein there's also like the TLC vein of mm-hmm. like the the um, uh, 90 Day Fiance which is like super popular and it's that same niche where it's like Basically, yeah. like dramatic, soapy. I think that one got. Life. I think that one got infamous in the last year because of that was that odd-looking man, Fred or Ed. I don't know that he, but he had like no neck, kind of like he was just like built differently. He had like no neck, and maybe I'm thinking of a different show. Oh, but I, you, I don't, you don't know. know. I know nothing about that but show. Like, really, so. He just there was like a lot, a lot of memes about this person that met up with this. Um, Asian lady and it was it was like super uncomfortable clearly because he was into it she was obviously not but like he would just say or do like cringy looking things or really uncomfortable looking things and this lady had to put up with it because 90 days she's kind of committed to it and it's just like yikes he's a weird he was just a weird looking man and probably unfairly you know you put on blast on the internet probably isn't going to be great for him so I don't want to make fun of him too bad but like he just he was built different. He had a different look to him, and people kind of just, I don't know, out of context, it was like, oh, poor guy. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, yeah, there are a lot of shows like that. That I mean, <laughs> well, if you think of, like, even, like, the, the I mean, you were, you were talking earlier about, I guess, the, one of the Real Housewives stars, Kim Zolciak, had her show that lasted for eight seasons just canceled. So, like, spinoffs of that, there's, like, the Honey Boo Boo universe and mm-hmm. the Dance Moms. And, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, there's so many, so so many shows like that. Like yeah, seriously. Like I don't even know where you would begin on all of that. Like if you just wanted to pick one up, I guess you would start at the quote unquote beginning. But yeah, do you really need to? Like I guess you probably would to learn some of them. Like I don't know. I don't. Yeah. It just sounds. It sounds exhausting. To but me. now you think the more I think about it, obviously like the Kardashians was that type of show. Yeah. Like the Hills, Laguna Beach. That's true. I mean, <laughs> they're, they, I mean, they've been around for Jeez. two decades now, so it's they're yeah. not new, but it's just like I don't know. I feel like with Laguna Beach and Hills, like they were a little bit more subdued, 
I mean, it was just like trust fund kids and like really rich kids just talking about their lives kinds of things. Yeah. Which. Well, actually, I remember like we were get we 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 read we Laguna Beach was on when I was in high school the same time that we were reading The Great Gatsby in English and like they were actually surprising a lot of parallels because like I mean The Great Gatsby is like revered as like this like great literary novel but at the same time it's out it's about a bunch of bored rich people who have too much time on their hands mm-hmm. which is essentially what Laguna Beach was so it was like I remember the time like we were able to like find, like find all these weird like parallels between mm-hmm. even though like one was obviously more quote unquote artfully written or whatever and mm-hmm. I mean I mean lots of you know symbolism and you know motifs within the plot and yada 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 but was on, Lauren Conrad smarter than we expected her to maybe she you was go, the, the Who, Daisy is she related to the Daisy she related Buchanan to someone of, or uh, I have absolutely not. I no I saw all the people on the show I, I don't know if they were necessarily related to any like celebrities but I think they were the, just children of like probably like doctors but weren't like Brody Jenner's kids yeah, Brody Jenner was on the. Well, he was the. He was on the hills. I don't know if he was on Laguna Beach. What's the two Jenner kids? Which the, the males? I Brody, think they were, Brody Jenner. Bro, who am I? Um, There's no yeah, thing. some. I, don't know, I feel like they were on the hills. Or he was Laguna on the hills. Beach I'm not sure if he. Was, I, I don't think. I don't think Laguna Beach. But I think they got a spinoff that was on Fox, but it only lasted like a season. That but it sounds was, right. It was just like them. It was basically them being wannabe. CKY or, or jackass and oh. not doing very well at it. Like that it was just a bunch terrible. of terrible. It was just rich kids literally just doing whatever they wanted. Like one episode is oh we go and run out ATVs or Forerunners and just go see what we. Can. It's just like shit like that. Like well, that was kind of the basis of the show. Sounds riveting. I can see why it. <laughs> why it lasted only one season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so any other thoughts before? <laughs> Uh, on Queen of Jordan 2 before we hop in. Let's hop in. So this is because it's structured like a reality show or the Queen of Jordan world, there's a non-traditional sort of opening where we don't have the 30 Rock theme or a really much of a cold open. It just sort of hops into uh, the story. But we do get like sort of quote-unquote flashbacks to previous episodes that sort of help fill in some of the blanks. Previously on Queen of Jordan. Randy, now that Barbara's dead, I need a nanny. That's perfect. All my children were taken away. Can you believe that Defuan is telling you that Angie's starting her own clothing line? Why don't you control your dog? He controls me. Hello, Angie. I I mean, hello, whoever it is going to be. Hi, Jack. It's Angie. I wanted to remind you we have a meeting today about my fashion line. Looking forward to it. We can do a lot of cross-promotion between our shows and your clothing brand, uh, Cheek. It's pronounced Chic. It's French. Now that I'm a fashion designer, I'm an uptuple threat. Reality star, actress, singer-songwriter, perfumist, IBS survivor, best-selling author of a book I didn't write, catchphrase coiner. I'll take that with cheese. Well, they don't all work. Chic is stretchable formal wear for elegant plus size women and huskier gays. Tonight is a big fashion show for Chic Summer Line. I find that my target customer sweats a lot and often gets thrown into a public pool. Now this show is the call. Uh, Angie, I'm sorry, but I have to take this other call. What? No, you don't Rude! This is Jack Donaghy. I'm stunned. The CIA captured a North Korean spy. So we were able to arrange a prisoner swap next week uh, in exchange for my wife. They get their spy back. A crate of Hollister sweatshirts and a signed headshot of Don Johnson. They just got Nash Bridges. Obviously, this is a very personal matter, so I would appreciate it if you guys at Bravo, excuse me, uh, gays at Bravo, handle this with the same delicacy with which you handled Dufan's boyfriend's pregnancy scare. It's my way. Till payday. Yay. So one thing I like about that is the scene kicks off with that thing that those types of reality shows do a lot where it's like they have to do exposition so the viewers know what's going on. So she's like, this is, I'm calling to remind you about our meeting, yada, yada. You wouldn't do it in your life, but it's like they have to clue the audience in somehow. And it's mm-hmm. like, it's funny because like they managed to do it, but also like, like working ridiculous lines. Like right. I find my audience sweats profusely or gets thrown in the pool or a lot or whatever. Like she does in the same like straight voices. She's saying the rest of stuff, which is 
silly and funny. Yeah, it comes off as like it would be like genuine yeah. conversation. It doesn't feel like a joke kind yeah. of thing. Uh, but they, they continue in the same way of um, the previous Queen of Jordan where there is, since there's no introduction, there's no um, title card, or there's a title card, but there's no cast. Uh, they do the same thing of guest starring, and then they list the characters as stars. Um, and then they also have a lot of like fun visual jokes of like, name uh, banners popping up like for Jack it says NBC executive or executive of NBC and then it puts ATV network just in case you're not sure what NBC is because no one talks about well, NBC way more people knew what NBC knew who was back then yeah that's so true now. yeah um, and then the joke of chic being spelled cheek but being pronounced chic even though that is not how you would pronounce that in French like it's just it's Levels of absurdity that it's just like, oh my god, <laughs> it's so wrong. Yeah. Also, I think they might have done this last time, but also when they're doing the credits at the top of the episode, it has in quotes written by mm-hmm. the actual yeah. writers of the episode of 30 Rock. Yeah. Yeah. They did the same thing as sort of, well, I think they're obligated to do that as like yeah. an actual Writers Guild of America thing, but also in the in the vein of a reality tv show they put air quotes or they put quotation marks around it that's our first rude yeah that's our first rude let's do a rude count take a shot every time you hear rude so far i've taken one shot all right that's one shot down um but no i mean that should be i guess that's our best catchphrase next ham like i don't know i'll have that with cheese (laughs) they're not all winners Uh, but back from the opening Angie reminds Tracy of her big fashion show and that he's he should definitely have a surprise ready for her. Where is he? Jack Donaghy is late for our meeting. Not to be racist, but white guys are typically punctual. I'm sorry I got so real, but nothing's gonna change unless there's a dialogue. I've never been so disrespected in my life, and I've gone to and worked at the post office. Mrs. Jordan, Mr. Donaghy sends his apologies, but he is unable to attend your meeting. I'm here as his representative. Oh, no. That man is about to get some cheese with that. That catchphrase is improving, baby. You don't give me notes. Hey, girlfriend. Looks like you need a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. Her name is Raven Simone Sr. I'm really close to the whole queue of J-Cast. So I know they're going to pull me into all of their drama, and I'm going to be on the show a lot. (laughs) I will be on the show a lot. I guess there's no follow-up from Jenna's incident last time with Queen of Jordan, because last time she was admitted to rehab. I mean, she escaped almost immediately, but there's no through line of that story. But they seem to know who she is. But well, she does, and she knows them very well. And she's yeah. a, she's a, used to all the drama that they're going yeah. to inflict upon her. I don't remember her getting like a little nameplate though. That seems like a missed opportunity. Oh, you're right. Uh, it's, I wonder why they didn't do that. Hmm. Maybe it's a deleted scene. Maybe they just forgot. Poor Jenna. Poor Jenna. She doesn't get any respect. No respect. But I do like her storyline in this of her just wanting the attention and doing anything to get it. And then when she does, well, we'll get there, but when she does finally get it and she realizes it, that that turn is so funny to me. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like actually 10 years past TGS Jenna Maroney is a perfect candidate for to actually be on the Real Housewives shows because <laughs> there are like at least a couple actresses who were formerly on some. Well, at least Serena's probably the most prominent, like some soap opera or some. Actually, Denise Richards was on one for a couple seasons too. So, mm-hmm. just people who are sort of past their prime and being cast in projects wow. could become real house. And it, that I'm that was totally where Jenna could be. Ten Sorry, years Jenna, past ten years. TGS. You're in your forties. You're past your prime. Can't be on TV. Exactly. It's in hard Hollywood. for women in Hollywood. No, but seriously, I mean that's like definitely a genre of Real Housewives. Star is actress who's no longer getting cast in projects. That's true, and it doesn't seem as. I guess if you if you want to like classify it, like they're not like D list, like being on a reality show is no longer like a D list kind of thing because that was like, I mean it can be I it's guess sort depending of on the kind of show it's... that it is, but I mean 
it obviously can reignite or at least sustain a career for a number of years if you're really good at it. So for sure, yeah. I mean, it's I feel like the stigmas have lessened on being on a reality TV kind of show. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's really easy from doing that to harness like Instagram followers. Once you have mm-hmm. Instagram followers, you can make a, I mean, decent money off SpawnCon. Yeah. So good for. I mean, I didn't say Jenna was unsuccessful. I just said she would totally be on trend to be cast in. Yeah. An they should. Do, they should do. That's that's the Thirty Rock reboot is <laughs> a Tracy or a Jenna faux reality show. Of her, she's broken up with Paul. Their their marriage didn't last, and you might call it the comeback. No, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. An an aging sitcom star who's past her prime, trying to get back with a new lease on life. Yeah, but she was trying to get just back, like. In the sitcom world, Jenna's just trying to keep attention on her. It's a different, it's a different story. I guess, but... But the comeback has to come back, right? Like, at this point, I feel like... Well, it was nine years between the first and second season, so how long has it been since the second season now? Uh, the first season was 2006? 2005? Yeah, it was like, oh, I want to say 05, 06. Let's see. It was when I was at the theater, because we used to run ads for it. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Like, what did the previews before movies? Season one was 2005. Season two was twenty fourteen. So twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three is the year of the comeback season three. All right. And they don't have kids in that show, do they? They didn't have kids, did they? Uh so she did not, but her husband but her husband Mark, Valerie Church's husband Mark, had a daughter from a previous relationship. So she was the stepmother to Francesca. She was was only in like a couple of episodes. She was in the first season, but she wasn't in the second season. She went to school or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. Yeah. Because I think that's when the actual actually played the daughter was was doing switch switched at birth uh, full time, so she wasn't available. Anyway, anyway, Lisa Lampanelli is at Thirty Rock. Where's Jack? Boot monster. I'm supposed to have a meeting with Jack Donaghy. Do you not know where your own husband is? I know they're not married. I just like them to know I don't give a f- about their lives. Jack's probably busy, Angie. His wife was kidnapped, but now she's coming back, and all these cameras are around, so they've been following him everywhere. Uh-huh. I see what's happening. Jack's not just blowing me off. He's trying to ruin my big night. No, Angie, what's happening with him is No, crazy. what's happening is the chic fashion show. That's what people want to know about. And Tracy's planning a huge surprise for me at the end. Really? What is it? I don't know, Liz. It's a surprise. Do you know what a surprise is? Now you do. You didn't even have a drink. Yeah, Le- I, okay. Lisa Lampanelli looks nothing like Tina Fey, so I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe that joke really lands. Or I, not. Was it supposed to be a joke about just how like cause there was a time when like some male comedian or male media figures and like women aren't funny, so. I don't know, it was supposed to be a commentary on, like, oh, all female comics are interchangeable and the same mm-hmm. and not funny. Like, that's the only thing I can guess, because they don't look alike, but they were, around this time, like, Tina Fey and Lee were two yeah. more more prominent, like, female names in comedy, I guess. Or it could just be, like, black people think white people look the same kind of thing, or they look similar. And But, I mean, like, Angie mm-hmm. knows who Liz is, so, like, she wouldn't think she's Lisa Lampanelli. So I'm not sure who's the joke from. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe back then we there would be a cultural, a clear cultural like connection that we yeah. would. And well, hold on, let me. I, don't know. I mean, I, that that one picture with Lisa Lipnell with the glasses, I can kind of see it, but she's got silver hair and. Well, if if there's a if there's a clear reference between the two it's nothing that's playing that's pulling up on google although one of the first articles that does come up is an old vanity fair article that says who says women aren't funny which lends me to believe that yeah well, that's from 2008 right so, so a couple years before, this, years. Yeah, years before this i mean i mean they're yeah i don't know <laughs> hmm. uh, meanwhile in the writer's room we get our first big uh, Queen of Jordan drama moment with Liz and baby Virginia. Don't learn to talk. A woman's power comes from her silence. You're Liz, right? Hey, Brandy, great episode last week. I thought it was very brave of you to pose for Playboy against Playboy's wishes. 
I need a date to Angie's fashion show, and Tracy tells me that you are, you know, the village bicycle. What? No. Why would he say that? Dr. Guy, Pollard Guy, Cleveland dude, British guy, rich dude, James Franco. I've been with the same woman for 22 years. No judgment, but to me, Liz Lemon is a sex maniac. Well, a lady never goes anywhere without a date. Can someone watch Virginia? I can't. Contractually, I can only hold beautiful black babies and Benetton ads. And I don't know if I should, because I might bite these fat little legs. I might eat them up. They're so fat and juicy. <laughs> Ruth. Yeah, I mean, that's the only one that would fit. Because Chris, Pilot, Cleveland. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Stuart LaGrange. I don't know if... I mean, he was just working for the UN. I don't know. I yeah, don't think I don't think he was a rich dude. dude. No, it's got to be. It's got to be Gavin Steve, Ma- Steve Martin. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only one that threw me. But she did. He did leave Chris, and um, well, she probably wouldn't have told people about the hair just because obviously everything that came connected with that would be super embarrassing. So yeah, it must be Gavin Bowler. It's got to be Gavin Bowler. That's the only one that fits. Yeah. yeah. Liz Lemon, that's what. Oh man. You date more than five guys, you're considered a sex man. I mean, more than that's oh, that's almost one guy a year. That's, that's a oof, lot. That's a lot, and who knows? I mean, yeah, um, but yeah. This is the first time we've seen Virginia in the realm of Thirty Rock. We've we've heard of her, we know of her birth and everything like that. This is, I think, the first and only time we see her. So she steals the spotlight. I think. I think she's a standout. Mm-hmm. Um, throughout this episode with the facial expressions it's just yeah. somehow on point so I'm curious like, I don't how know. much they filmed her and just were like fuck we've got For we got a great shot like I feel like they would have me filming her a lot just be, and like I can't imagine how hard it is really to work with like a baby or a child but I don't imagine they would like sit there that long for you to film them so it's just like the patience it would take for all of that it's just yeah, I don't think it's easy because it's like I feel like a trope in awards that directors who like have to direct children like if basically they get good performances out of child actors like they they win awards and stuff mm-hmm. because I that's what I hear like it's hard to do so that's like yeah. a, it's like a trope that a movie with good like child performances like the director will win or something because. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do, I guess. I <laughs> as a pay, as a as a payoff of your hard, your hard. Yeah, so exploit, exploit children. You too can win an Oscar. Well, I wouldn't say exploit because I mean the children do sign up for it, depending on. Or their stage parents. Or their stage parents. That's true. Anyway, well, way to make it dark. Wah, wah. Uh, that's our anyway, second rude. Anyway, the point, right? The second rude, yeah. But the point is, been no. It's like the yeah. The facial expressions are hilarious and amazingly appropriate yeah. in many of the scenes throughout this episode. So. Good job, Virginia. Good job, Virginia. Virginia Jordan. Sounds like a politician's name. It does. Huh? Future president, Virginia Jordan. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to go back when, real quick, when uh, Angie's dealing with Jenna. And she says, no, I have a girlfriend, Raven Simone Sr., implying that there's a Raven Simone Jr. And I want to, I, obviously that's a joke, but... Now I'd love to know, I'd love to meet this person just because it's just like, okay, let's see what Raven Simone Jr. is up to. I don't know. That's just such a weird joke. That's funny to me. Anyway, uh, in Jack's office, he's mulling over how to get Avery back as soon as possible when he gets a, se- uh, gets a special guest of his own in Avery's mother. No, Sam, the military brings her back. Don't even let Clinton know about this. He and Steve Bing will break out their sex plane. It is a sex plane. There aren't even any seats. It's just futons and jacuzzis. I've got to run, Sam. Jack, I... Oh, God, what is this? Oh, it's just one of our shows. They're following me today. Oh, is this one of those ridiculous reality shows like Ken Burns Jazz? Disgusting. I'm sorry, Diana. Ignore them. Eventually, you won't even know they're here. I'm just a little overwhelmed right now. I could use a drink. I'm afraid that while we're on camera, I can only offer you uh, Defoine's uh, boutique wine. Defoine. Defoine. Please defoine responsibly. To Avery's return. I'm a part of this as well. I played Avery in the TV movie Kidnapped by Danger. Jenna, this is for family only. (laughs) Now you sound like the cops outside of Jackie O's funeral. But I got in there and sang almost all of Hey Big Spender. Jenna, this is inappropriate. 
I suggest you go back to whatever Florida bathroom you crawled out of. I can see I'm not wanted here. But thank you for looking up on Wikipedia that I was conceived on a toilet. No one wants me in their story. If a beautiful woman cries and no one hears it, did she waste $700 on crying lessons at Adrian Brody's unaccredited acting school? Jack, when Avery does get back, I don't think we should tell her about us. Oh, f <sighs> Act break. So there's a very funny visual joke when Jack picks up the bottle of wine on the label that says white throwing wine, <laughs> as in fact Jenna does moments later yeah. and will happen multiple times in this episode. And so. throws at no one? Like, I don't think she throws at anyone specifically because Jack doesn't seem wet and she doesn't throw anywhere near Diana's direction, so. Yeah. But hey. Maybe maybe there's a contractual obligation that you must throw a glass of wine. Exactly. On Real yeah, Housewives, there's your drinking wine and your throwing, throwing wine. wine. And Deflon has his own throwing wine. Uh, um, yeah, this is one of the rare episodes that 30 Rock has bleeps in, but in the realm of a reality show, it makes sense for there to be bleeps in it. So yeah, Jenna has her very own koan or philosophical query in... <laughs> If a sad white lady is crying and no one hears it, did she really pay $700 for Adrian Brody's unaccredited crying course? Like, I mean, if she used it to win, her, to win an Oscar in a movie, then it was worth it. Yeah. What's happened to Adrian Brody? Is he, I feel like he's kind of been quiet for the last decade or he, half decade, really. He was literally just cast in something oh, I read about, but okay. let me see if I can find out what it was. Like he took a break for a Succession of season three, that's what it that's is. That's right, that's right. But you're right, he has been relatively pretty quiet the past. Uh, he's actually yeah, going to be in the Fresh Dispatch. Wes Anderson movie which is the Wes Anderson movie coming out later this year. Yeah. Um, that's what he's been doing. He's been doing a lot of Wes Anderson films. Yeah. Yeah, so he's been around. But yeah. Hmm. But I do like Jack and Diana's storyline in here of sort of breaking the wall of reality where they forget they're being filmed and now they have to cover up their ass even though this is a reality show it's probably not going to be seen for a few months so they could explain it away in that time before the episode airs or because Jack is an executive of Cable Town could easily get this in I could, I imagine he could use his power so easily for all sure. that wiped out that would be but less dramatic that's actually. true it would be less dramatic it wouldn't be as fun as throwing uh, an opening of a new restaurant that no one's ever heard or doesn't exist in the same 24 hour span so um, after the commercial break, uh, we come back to uh, Jack and Diana trying to explain away uh, what you meant, what you heard wrong. You didn't hear us. You heard something different. I want to make sure we're all very clear about what my mother-in-law said in my office. She said we shouldn't tell Avery about Gus. Uh, Gus is someone I've gone into business with, and Avery wouldn't approve of him. Why would she disapprove? Uh, well, uh, because they dated at Yale. Gus was a professor. Of course you'll meet him. We do business all the time. Tracy, I know you're planning a big romantic surprise for me at the end of the fashion show. But Jack Donaghy is messing with my special day. So whatever you were thinking about doing, double it. Call Monique. Do a dove release. Parachute in and propose to me all over again. You hear? Angie, I wasn't even going to go to your fashion show. It's at 8, which is 9 a.m. Tokyo time. That's when Takashi's parents leave for work, and we play Mass Effect 3 online. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Tanaka think he's in school, but he's playing video games with a drunk adult. <laughs> now, I know you're just saying that because you don't want to ruin the surprise, because you're a good husband. Oh my god. Ned Stark is dead? Spoiler alert. So this would have been right as I think Game of Thrones season 1 had been wrapping up. So he's reading the books. Uh, Grizz is reading the books. So for him to keep those spoilers out of his mind, good for him. That spoiler alert for, what, a 20-year-old book and a 10-year-old movie now? Or a 10-year-old show? Yeah, so the so the first season aired in spring 2011. So this might actually would have been the around the time the second season was airing, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, gosh. So he's just getting all caught up. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. And they just started doing promotional uh, uh, pictures of onset of the prequel series that's coming, I think, next year of the Game of Thrones. Which Dance, one? Dance with Dragons so or Dance yeah. with Dragons or something like that. It's the one with Matt Tennant, one of the one of the Doctor Who people. Matt David something? Tennant? No. Matt um, Jones or Matt, Matt Smith? Smith Matt something? Smith. Yeah, I think he's playing one of the Targaryen people. Ah. I feel like I've heard about six, at least six different spinoffs. I think there's only one or two, but I don't think the original creators are involved in any of them, which would probably delight some fans or upset others. I'm not sure, because I think they got that Netflix deal, and I think they're, they're done complete with the Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're done. I mean, they're done with HBO, because... Right. Mm-hmm. And and weren't they like originally contracted to do a Star Wars or Star I think Trek so. or something? They might. I think yes. it was a Star Wars, yeah, but I think all that stuff's been put on hold yeah. anyway because people realize it's too much Star Wars. But um, there's some fun visual jokes in here of when Angie enters the room to talk to Tracy. He's is it William Tell? Is the shoot the apple off your head? Yeah. All right. I know my fiction. Real. Real. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, you're you're our little uh, in, in Carta encyclopedia kid over here. I'm gonna call you Encyclopedia Brown. Oh, I've never even read that book series. Well, that was he was a detective, right? He was uh, Encyclopedia Brown was the boy detective. Yes. Yeah, he was the Nancy Brown. Nancy. <laughs> so first, I was Drew? I was gonna say Nancy Grace. That's like, Nancy that's Drew, but that's a, that's a totally separate yeah. series. Nancy Drew. Yeah. Is that a real person or like a so there's a like legend so there's a legend okay. about William Tell which is obviously what you're referring to I think though he may have actually been a real person and maybe there's some legends around what he did or didn't do. is he related to the William Tell overture or is that just coincident was there a lot of that was his his twin brother oh. William Tell also named William okay. yeah keeping it simple there all right but uh, another good joke about video games at this period of time on TV, because you can easily make wacky video game jokes and no one really follows up or researches them, but they actually were on point because Mass Effect 3 was out around this time. It was a big game, and it did have online multiplayer. So kudos for getting that attention to detail. Um, funny enough, the, the remasters of that trilogy is coming out uh, this summer, so... Unfortunately, no multiplayer for the third game this time around, but uh, oh well. That's just a fun little fact that ten years, nine, ten years later, that game's going to have like a resurgence. Hooray! Good job, Mass Effect. You go, Mass Effect. So while Randy finds a date from Arby's for the big fashion show and Liz is struggling with Virginia, realizing how motherhood may be more difficult than she imagined, uh, Jack is ready for his uh, meeting with Gus. If everything goes according to plan, Avery will be back in a few days. In the meantime, I have a lot of work to do with Gus, my business partner, whom Diana mentioned earlier. Gus! <laughs> There's Gus. Why are you wearing the hat I asked you not to wear anymore to our meetings? We're higher up here, so the sun's electricity is stronger. Well, uh, let's go over the numbers, Gus. As you can see, the numbers look pretty good. We're under budget and in line with projections. Great. Well, uh, meeting over. We probably shouldn't have even filmed that. It was so boring. (laughs) Oh, Diana, you remember Gus, whom you said we shouldn't tell Avery about because she used to date him. She was nasty. She loved pee. Thank you, Gus. No, Jack, I didn't say Gus. I already explained to them what I said. I said I did not want Avery to know about Russ. In Slavic myth, Russ is the founder of Russia. Why can't Avery know about the mythological founder of Russia? Because Jack has invested a lot of money in a restaurant I'm opening called Russ. It is Russian cuisine. Who doesn't love cold purple soup? Uh, Diana, we're talking about the same thing because as you know, the restaurant Russ is the business venture I'm engaged in with Gus. Right. He is the chef. As I mentioned earlier, he's a professor at Yale. Which is funny because he looks so much more like a chef. Oh, what's funniest is that he's both. And now he works at the restaurant we can't tell Avery about. And the grand opening is tonight.
Oh, gosh. That is, ta- I mean, both a Yale professor and a talented chef. I mean, yeah. that's a... A professor of a... food, you one might oh. say. Hmm. Yeah. But Gus is played by Hannibal Burris, who uh, would be a writer on 30 Rock at this time. But I think he's post his SNL writing period. Um, but this is second or third cameo he's had in the series as a bum. Uh, but I think this is just a fantastic bit of a giant tinfoil hat and <laughs> yeah, what, you don't know the, protecting from the electrics you don't know many young sun. professors who wear tinfoil hats around maybe that's i'm missing them I'm, maybe i'm just not looking out enough for him that's but how like, you get tenure even after he delivers his line he like looks at the camera's like can you believe this idiot like come on that's common knowledge know, it's just it's it's fun little acting and then i mean this is one of those things about sitcoms that just riles me up but it's just like if you just talk to each other and explain the situation of a cover story you wouldn't have to give two different cover stories and then have to finagle them all together but that's how you create situational comedy is mishaps and not talking to each other but anyway I love the imagination that Russ is the mythical creature who invented or founded Russia it's quite a a Slavic story, like, where, where does that come I feel like that's rooted in some reality someone was told as a kid, like a writer was told that as a kid, and now they're... I think it was rooted in she came with the name Russ and had to scramble <laughs> to come up with something that made sense. It was Russ, Russia, Let's, there we go. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah, who doesn't love cold purple soup? Delicious. Mila Dufan has to keep Virginia and Liz separate because there's just too much drama. The girls are fighting. Oh, no. Elizabeth, this is very, very easy for me to say to you, but you can't come in here right now. Well, I just want to drop off this little crinkly book that I got for Virginia. I can't let you in. After what happened betwixt you this morning? No, Virginia is not having you. What are you talking about? I'm my bikey, fat little legs. They're so fat and juicy. Rude. <laughs> it was a compliment. That's a thing people say to babies. Never talk about a black woman's leg size. Not on babies, not on the Williams sisters, not on a mannequin at Avenue. We have come too far. Now, you know me, girl. I don't, really. I stay above these feuds. Did I get involved when Portia took the over-the-counter colon hell test in the bathroom at Ranger's domestic violence costume ball? I did, but I didn't want to. Can I be honest? I think I'm just anxious for Virginia to like me because I've been thinking about motherhood lately. I have a serious boyfriend right now. Lisa, Dufon doesn't talk about people behind their backs, so I'm just going to tell you straight to your face that what you're saying right now is very boring. All I know is I'm going to stay out of this fight between you and Virginia. That baby is a piece of work. You know she should be able to stack blocks in a tire by number. She won't do it. I thought you didn't talk about people behind their backs. Rude. Oh. Go away. That's cute. Uh, so there's four roots there. That's I think that's our final root. We might have one more. Let's keep an eye out. Um, but I love the joke of the crinkly storybook magically becoming a stuffed giraffe with no explanation outside of the fact that obviously the crinkly storybook is <laughs> messing with the microphones you can't hear the conversation so you have to quickly change it out for a stuffed giraffe that's so funny that's such a funny joke because you know that there are producers in reality shows that are like you can't have anything that makes too much noise no dangling jewelry nothing that if you're going to be swinging stuff about that it's going to interrupt with the drama we need you to be like audible we need to hear you we can only recreate this conversation so many times exactly we can only cut and pause and come back we we don't need we don't need anything because you need that fashion you need that the passion you don't need two takes of the same argument that's that's crazy talk but it's so funny and then again great acting from this this baby of i'm mad go like she crosses her <laughs> arms and I, I just it Multiple takes, I imagine, of getting that, but still, like, fantastic job. Yeah. Good job. Also, we should say, one way this episode does tie into larger story arcs is, obviously, we know that Liz has now decided with Chris that they want to have a Mm -hmm. baby, so it's really her testing her ability Mm -hmm. to spend time with and right. be around children understand so. how, the, how much energy and responsibility it is yeah. to actually have a kid and it doesn't go great 
until it <laughs> sort of does at the end. It kind of all works out. But even at the end of the day, that baby doesn't go home with Liz. So even all the energies she's sure. exhausted, it's a one day, two day situation. It's not something that's she has true. To, but Liz is trying to figure out if she can no, abide absolutely. with No, it's, it's definitely a great tra- uh, practice um, trial run kind of thing. Um, but also, I think this is the most interaction that Dolph. Wolfon and Liz have had and I don't know that scene right there with all those like lines I think I feel like that's clicking in Tina Fey's head like okay Titus Burgess is a fantastic comedic actor and whatever project I'm working on next he's going to be a part of because I just he has like he has such a great delivery of like I don't know I, I usually don't talk about people behind their backs but I gotta tell you what you're saying right now is really boring like that's such a Titus line yeah and I could absolutely see him saying that in Kimmy Schmidt like it's just it's his personality is all in there so it just it, it's perfect so um, yeah it's good times well right the I don't talk about people behind his backs what you're saying is boring and then also also <laughs> she, <laughs> she should be able to stack box right now yeah So Jenna is still desperate to get on camera and finds Virginia at the baby salon, which, again, no child would ever do that. No child would be patient enough to sit and let someone be that close to them. Virginia is special. Virginia is another level. Uh, But uh, after hearing about the story, Liz has her breakdown and sort of breaks the rules of reality TV. No, I don't care that the others went to Pierre Badalini's salon without me. It's not a feud. I just... I've never spent much time with babies, okay? And what if I'm bad at it? This is good TV. I would watch this. I would feel for Liz. Isn't this usually a bathroom? No, Trey, it's usually Lutz's office. Let's see. I think I just solved the mystery of the Phantom Poopa. What's wrong, LL? You look like Angie when I tell her I want to retire and live in an old lighthouse. It's just Defuan and everybody are saying that I'm in a fight with Virginia, which is idiotic because she's a baby. Maybe it's just that children in general don't like you. Thank you, Tracy. I am dealing with something real here, but all anyone wants to do on these dumb shows is fight and scream and throw things. I wouldn't know. I really don't watch TV. I'm more of a masturbator. Well, I'm about to get original on you, Tracy. There's no such thing as reality on reality television. You happy now, America? Liz got real. Because you're not real until you're flipping over furniture. That's true, and ripping your microphone off. It's very and real. Flipping off the, the the production crew. That's that's when you know it's it's real reality. Yeah, but there, it, this is another one of those like thirty yard moments where there's like some genuine emotional scene or emotional moment of like this admitting the reason she wants to spend time with Virginia. She wants to know the moment you're already saying like she wants to know what it's like to be with a kid and get better at it and it's immediately undercut by Tracy asking wasn't this a bathroom and then you get the titular line of the phantom pooper which still is unfounded unsolved unless he's admitting that he's the phantom pooper because it sounds like he goes in right. there all the time so yeah because he well, why right. would he say I just found out the mystery of the because phantom he thought pooper. it was a bathroom but it uh, turns out it's Lutz's office and apparently someone has been phantom pooping in Lutz's office Turns out, Tracy realized it's him. <laughs> it's him. All right. You go, Tracy. You... Yeah. The other thing I didn't like, or I don't know if I didn't like, but just like pulling the, ep- the episode title from that doesn't make sense to me because like oh, yeah. it's a throwaway line. And... Absolutely, yeah. I think we touched on it a couple episodes back about having, yeah, the Murphy, the Murphy Brown. Murphy Brown, yeah. Like, it was just like, it's such a one-line joke and it's it's easy to miss kind of thing so it's like entitling the whole episode around that yeah also it really has nothing to do with queen of jordan no but no it's yeah but it's eye catching i guess and you true. see that written down you're probably like oh i wonder what that's about i guess on a reality tv show if that comes up on your dvr it would hook you in that is true so maybe it's maybe it's more savvy than we think it is tracy is getting them nielsen's good job tracy get them nielsen's girl so Tracy's fashion or Angie's fashion show is kickstarting as well as uh, the Russ restaurant, the grand opening are happening on the same day. 
uh, in the same room of all places. And meanwhile, Kenneth shows up to see how everything's going. Well, all the guests arrive. Welcome to Russ. This evening we're serving all the pierogies Costco had and then Burger King. That's a sharp look, Kenneth. Thank you, sir, but I can't take all the credit. Everything I know about fashion, I learned from my old college roommate, John Mark Carr. Oh, for God's sake! A lot of nerve coming here. You know this is Virginia's night. You have no class, you prostitution whore. What are you talking about? I'm hitching my wagon to Virginia's star, trying to get a little camera tempo. Jenna, you've had cameras following you around all day. You're a star now. They want you on the show. They want me? Which means I'm too good for this crap. Like when I sang at that children's hospital. Get away from me. I'm revoking my waiver. Now blur my face. Blur it more. More. Now disguise my voice. Thank you, gays. <laughs> yeah, prostitution, um, yeah, prostitution whore. Prostitution whore. Oh, Teresa Judice. Oh, man. Uh, there's a lot in that scene. And again, it's just Jenna stealing all the attention. Uh, but she does a great job. And I love the... The whole redu- uh, I revoke my waiver, blur my face, and re- and change my voice because it's just like there's no way that would ever happen. Because if you revoke your waiver, they would have to do it throughout the entire episode. Right. So it's just like it's presented almost like this live. But episode. it's much funnier to do. No, it live. it's absolutely hilarious. But it's just like oh, that's so funny. But like also when she's she realizes the cameras have been on her all day, she knows exactly where to look to always be looking at a camera is just like an extra touch of of course she knows they've been watching her all day and she knows exactly where to look at them it's so funny but the visual joke the reason jenna even storms over there is liz and virginia happen to be wearing the exact same outfit which i guess is also a a reality staple for a reason for some of them to fight is just because yeah I was going to wear that. No, I told you I was going to wear that kind of thing. Right, and the concept of, oh, you're ruining so-and-so's big day by whatever action you've just taken. Which it's not even Virginia's big day. She's (laughs) just there. So it's just just so many tropes in one. Oh, and also there's a reference that Kenneth's fashion inspiration, John Mark Carr is, I don't know, the, well, I do know he the, he would the person who like falsely confessed to murdering John Benet Ramsey. Yeah, and which, was I think disturbed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure um, mentally unsound. Yeah. Um, do you think that's something we'll ever find out? Like, we'll ever actually know the truth? No, we for sure won't. But I think people, from what I can gather, the people who have spent a lot of time looking into it feel pretty confident. Like it was the brother who did it, and the family just Covered tried to cover it up so he yeah. wouldn't get arrested or whatever for it yeah. but i have no idea that's all allegedly like nothing's been officially proven and i i, I don't think well yeah. unless one of the parents ever basically outright Admits say that, that or say whatever happens either the like, parents pass away yeah and the brother does like a memoir and reveals all or on his deathbed kind of thing like someone reveal otherwise i don't think because there's no money in it now, so there's no real reason to... Yeah. As morbid as that is, there's no reason to admit to it out of the fact that, well, now you're just going to go to prison kind of thing. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of... Is it a dark joke, or is it just like a silly joke? It's what, I don't know. Every so often, 30 Rock throws out like those random, like really like 30-year, 20-year, whatever, out-of-date, sort of out-of-date references, yeah. callbacks, so... I don't know. Like it's so removed from. I was like, well, I'm kind of right. I mean, not far off. Yeah. I. I mean, I don't know. Like it's so far. That I mean, even then, it's so far in the past. It's like I guess it's like, I don't know. Like it's not like you're. It's like a too soon thing. Yeah, it's more just like obscure. Because I think if if he had said like someone like my old roommate Timothy McVeigh, like that wouldn't make much sense either. Well, he doesn't look like a skinhead, so that (laughs) that wouldn't work either. I mean, he's wearing he's wearing like this like kind of like dweeby like. 
Yeah. Collared shirt and Someone who, pants and his hair is like kind of gussied yeah. up in a weird way, which looking at pictures of that guy, like it's similar <laughs> to his look, so that's what they were going uh-huh. for, I'm sure. But so mm-hmm. yeah, it's one of those things where like every so often they'll throw out a random like 20 year old reference and yeah. it's, you have to, I don't know. Google it kind of. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not just like, I guess it's like so out of date that it's like not, I don't know. It's, it's dark, but it's not like a, yeah. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. All right. So. Um, we come to the conclusion of Jack and Diana's story. Um, there's a fun, there's a fun two reference joke that that's made in this where Kenneth is in the back trying to plead with Angie about Tracy and why he's not there. And he has like this recurring bit in this episode where he keeps tripping over a cord and the first cord he trips over, that's, they, they frame it like it's also an onset fight of reality shows of like slow motion replays it's just it's absurd that and then there's a joke at the end when the credits are rolling where he trips over another chord he thinks it's the same chord <laughs> and they put up subtitles of the chord saying that's racist and kenneth looking super guilty like it's just silly um but it's more of like a visual joke so it doesn't really work too much on this but jack and diana wrap up their storyline and of course an awkward and uncomfortable way for jack ready to do dessert service. We actually pulled this off. We opened a restaurant. We're that man. What's cocaine like? <laughs> oh my god, Kenneth steals that scene. His model walk in just a bag? Like, it's not a dress. It just looks like one of the things you put a dress in to keep it from getting dirty. <laughs> and... <laughs> He he's works com- it though. He's committed, like his yeah. body language is all over the place. But that that line of "What's cocaine like?" Like he's already like cliche model. Like let's start doing cocaine and get body fit. And it's just like ins- it's so funny. But even Dwayne can't be happy for him. And she's like, "Oh, you were horrible." God, that's so funny. That's such a funny scene. Yeah. Also, in the scene right before that, after. Uh... Jack and Diana say they pulled it off and go in to kiss like there's the, a bunch of reaction shots of everyone in the audience being shocked and it's like most people are shocked but like when it cuts to Sari she just looks like disgusted yeah. instead of shocked she's like oh yeah, it's god two people, it's you old people old kissing people. Ugh, who wants to see that and, then, and there's also the joke of Jenna's face is still blurred which throughout the rest of the episode and it's just a nice little detail <clears throat> but uh, Liz helps explain it away what was that damn you two Avery's coming back from North Korea Portia reads the papers. I hate that that's my catchphrase. What was that? That was nothing. I mean, I mean, Jack's like that with everybody. He's a kisser. Right, Jack? Uh, of course. Uh, it's European. If you don't kiss someone, they're offended. Very good, nice seeing you, Lemon. Jack! Dufon hasn't said hi yet. Honey, what was that? <laughs> okay, Liz, I don't know what she's talking about. But Virginia said she knows what you just did for Jack. She misjudged you, and she would like a hug. The feud's over. It's all good. Now I'm just looking forward to this trip. Because Virginia loves her little giraffe so much, the show is sending us on a girl's getaway to Somalia! Whoop, whoop. 
So Jack uh, once again looks like the butt of many jokes on Queen of Jordan. Unfortunately, the previous episode he didn't look like he might be gay, <gasps> despite his protests. And here he's not coming off much better. Um, but he's just got a line of people at the party that he has to kiss to show how welcoming and European that he is. Uh, and then That's we, Jack, notoriously European you know, in demeanor and action. Absolutely. And it's on brand. Economic views. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Liz and Virginia squash their beef as well. Um, since Liz... Um, and so now they're going to Somalia, which I feel like paints a prettier picture than it actually is. Because in the credits, we see them in this war-torn area, which would explain, I assume, why Liz is drinking so much during their trip. Because... If you had to go to a war torn area, I guess you'd probably want to be not in the best location for a girl's trip. No, definitely not for a baby. Definitely not for a baby. Much less a girl's trip. But yeah, uh, we come up on the the finale of the episode in Angie confronting Tracy. Um, but has he outsmarted her on her own TV show? Before we do that, I wonder if the Somali thing is a reference to like, I guess it's probably a trope where like they go on random trips, but like they had good. They want to keep the budget low, so they keep it cheap. So, like, instead of going to, like, an, like on, I don't know, like, on safari or to, like, a right. beautiful beach, it's like, we send you to Somalia to because that's all we're going to pay for. Right. I guess, like, the setup is you think it's going to be, like, a safari in Somalia to see giraffes, but it ends up being the war-torn. Yeah. Oh, that's depressing. I hope you're at peace with your God, Tracy Jordan, because you are about to meet your maker. Honey, you seem upset. I spent the last 20 years supporting you. I had three of your children. I gave you a kidney, a kneecap, and a bladder. But I ask you to do one thing, and you can't do it. All I wanted was a standing ovation and for people to tweet that I was the new icon for black womanhood and then for me to tweet, why just black womanhood? Instead, I got nothing. I might as well be Daphne. Who? I'm Daphne. I handle conflict appropriately and I'm up to date on my mortgage payments. Oh no, I turned what was supposed to be a boring romantic evening into a gigantic fight in front of all these cameras. Yes. How inconsiderate of you to cause all this drama and start this riveting fight. Our celebrity marriage is on a brink of collapse. We're a train wreck you cannot look away from. I can't stand the sight of you. My love tank is empty. and last all through next season. I'm cheating on you! What? How dramatic! <sighs> they know the storylines of what's good TV, I guess. I mean, divorce, you definitely can stretch throughout a whole season. So. You can stretch out multiple seasons. Yeah, I don't think too many people would tune in to two seasons of a divorce. You'd have to wrap it up for the first season, but... Yeah. Anyway. Also, to tie back to what we were talking about earlier, Daphne is the boring and sensible one who gets ri- ri- who gets written off after exactly. the season for not creating enough like, drama. Like the token white girl just doesn't have too much drama. She doesn't have, she doesn't cause waves. She's just in the background. She's the I guess she'd say the Siri. She would be like the Siri. She's just like she's fine. Or no, that's terrible. There's no one on Thirty Rock that doesn't. Yeah. But on all those kinds of reality shows, there's the always peak. the token sensible. Right. Yeah person yeah but even like her her lines of i i handle uh conflicts you know calmly and pay all my and it it, it definitely seems like it's a jab at white america and black america of african americans are always late on their bills and they like to call scenes and be loud where she's saying i'm a white person who's very calm with conflict and i pay all my bills on time kind of thing like it feels like that's the barb that they're trying to... Oh, I didn't take hit. it away. I took it as she's the token, like, non-dramatic person on the that cast of the reality but show. But then I, I have it. those lines if I pay my mortgage on time. Because 
I feel like a recurring thing on the show. Like, this is, like, someone who's, like, broke or living way beyond their means or yada oh. yada or whatever. I don't know. I mean... Is that really a storyline they do? I feel like if you want to present yourself as high class, you wouldn't make that known. Well, right, but... Right, but that's the thing. Like some, everyone is wants to be perceived as rich, but they're not honest. Like sometimes oh, they're living beyond okay. their means. To I mean, I, I don't know that. That's how I'm I took it. I don't know enough about the lore of all the housewives to know like how you know what I mean. Like how probably storylines like, have happened, but I'm sure yeah, that's what they it, probably did spend more money than they should have, kind of thing. Hmm. Well, you go, Daphne. Yeah, I mean, I didn't take it as the full-on commentary on saying, like, being in contrast to, like, stereotypes of black people. But, I mean, I do think that part of the point of that joke was, like, yeah, she was, like, a boring white lady. Like, that's part of it. But I don't think it was specifically a commentary, right? Like, okay. comment. I mean, may- maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was, but I just, I didn't take it that way. Hmm. Well. Huh. To each their own, I guess. All right, well, final thoughts on... Queen of Jordan 2, now that we know who the mystery pooper is. Rude. The phantom pooper. No, I, I think the, going back through it again for the recording, still, like, there's a lot of great moments in here. A lot of great bits and lines that run through my head every now and again, but it's just not as clean as the previous Queen of Jordan. But it's still super... I mean, it's still a great 30 Rock episode, um, but coming off last week's being also a gimmick episode kind of yeah. too soon I think I think they could have spaced it out a little bit yeah. better either done it earlier in the season or spaced out the live episodes yeah. where you don't have two gimmick episodes also it's just funny they were two like gimmick episodes but also the second oh, iteration geez. of something that had been done before and as we know the sequel is never quite as good as the original no, where's the trilogy the trilogy never gets closed we never got a That's Queen true. Jordan 3 or a live That's live such show. a shame oh man so the, the credit scene uh, of this episode is sort of um, just wrapping up, just a small little cap on each each person's story. There's Dauphin just happens to be in town so he can get some affection from Jack. Uh, Kenneth uh, continuing his tripping over courts uh, scenarios. And Liz and Virginia on their, their Somalia getaway. Uh, it's a war-torn just hellscape that no one should be in. Uh, but yeah, and then that's that's it. Um, but yeah, as always, thank you for joining us on Go To There. If you like what we're doing, rating, reviewing, and all that fun stuff, is going to be the best way to help us out. Otherwise, we will see you next week in season six penultimate episode, mm. the return of Avery Jessup, wherein Avery Jessup returns. Chris tries to fill the traditionally male provider role for a potential child with Liz, and Jenna tries to rediscover her southern roots to win a sponsor for her upcoming celebrity wedding. Ooh. I don't really remember much of that episode, so we'll have to stay tuned and see how it goes. We sure will. We sure will. David, take us out. See you next time. Next week on Queen of Jordan. Hey, I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd pop up and say hello. For God's sakes, Dufuan, I'm working. Hi. Come here. You again? I am so sorry. Different cord. You were two hours late. You stole all my hangers, and yeah, I'm drunk. I'm on vacation. All anyone wants to do on these dumb shows is fight and scream and throw things. I wouldn't know. I really don't watch TV. I'm more of a masturbator. 